the Joe Rogan experience. How many members, when you combine all the cartels, how many members are we talking about? That's, I mean, it's pretty hard to put a number on how, I will say this. More than a million? I will say this. They defeated the Mexican army in Sinaloa. Yeah, that was bananas. Yeah. When they captured El Chapo's son. Yeah. And then the army gave it back. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you can have him back. Well, sorry. Uh, the, the that whole situation, uh, and it was like I, I remember that was happening, and I was getting asked questions about it, and it was live. It was all yeah. of, all of a sudden just popped off, you know. Um, basically, a, supposedly, the official story from the Mexican government is that they send a special police unit to capture him, right? Which is completely false, I think, because you don't send thirty five agents to capture one of the the heads of one of the biggest Sinaloa cartel cells, right? So it's pretty much uh, by chance they spotted this party. People were armed there. They went there. All of a sudden, El Chapo's son is there. So you think they just stumbled into him? There's a, I, I posted a video on, on my feed of the capture of, of, the, of, of uh, El Chapo's son. You can see it, and you can see the surprise and really – how the agents are kind of uncomfortable or are fearful of what they just stumble in on. Um, imagine U.S. agents stumble in on one of the um, America's most wanted individuals up here. They're going to put him on the ground. They're going to handcuff him. Mm -hmm. In the video, you can see that they point their rifles at him, and he calmly takes out his gun and hands it to somebody inside of the, inside of the house he was in and walks out and kind of tries to negotiate with the people outside, the federal agents that are trying to arrest him. And you can see that the agents are like, oh, what did we stumble in on? Oh. Right? So that happened. They grabbed them. They reported back to Mexico. They captured him. They started to announce the capture. And his brother, um, uh, his half-brother, Archibaldo, basically called in all of the reinforcements from all surrounding towns and regions in Sinaloa. And it was flooded with a bunch of armed cartel guys. All of Sinaloa was. Wasn't there a video of the government people and the cartel people talking? Yeah, there's, oh. there, there's, it's on my feed. Um, yeah. you, can, you can see it if you want. It's, a, it's basically a, an army unit that was being sent to reinforce security in, in Culiacan, being surrounded by cartel members. Yeah, is this it right here? Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, obviously, the guys running around with a vest and wearing skinny jeans are some of the Sinaloa cartel members. <sighs> um, <coughs> and they just talk it through. I mean, uh, they're outnumbered, and also there's a, there's talk about uh, there's a there's a specific community out there in Sinaloa Law where all the f army families uh, members live, and they were apparently being held hostage by cartel guys as a bar bargaining chip. So, so all these guys that we're seeing here, they're dressed in civilian clothes with the vest. Those are all cartel guys. Those are all cartel guys. Jesus Christ! And that th and that they're shaking hands with everybody. Well, you know, hey, what's up, homie? <laughs> I mean, uh, they the, again. We go back into the whole what what is uh, the fight they have in them, right? Mm -hmm. The Sinaloa Law Cartel was basically surrounding some of their communities and holding holding their family members hostage. So that went out over the radio. So as an army member going in to fight the cartel, so you know what, I'm out of this fight. Yeah. So they raise their hands. So. And so then they release the hostages. Everybody backs out. Yeah. I mean, there's. They, they defeated the Mexican government, basically. Uh, a, anything that went up against, you know. Um, they surrounded the city. Usually you'll see classic uh, classic uh, Mexican cartel uh, uh, activity. They close off the streets going into the city by burning uh, semis and trailers and stuff like that. So you would see all these burning semi-trailers in the region. So if you want to move in, you can't. And if you want to use your helicopters... The cartels have anti-aircraft capabilities. So uh, they broke out a bunch of people from the prison, just taking advantage of the whole chaos. Uh, you, you, you could see there's a few other videos where there's uh, armored trucks with uh, 50 cows and maduses on the back of them just moving around the city. So there's no way. There's no way you can. Uh, this is the breakout state prison. You know, took advantage of the whole chaos and just, you know, let, just let, uh, let's break some of our friends out. Phew. Right. So just pure chaos. Uh, eventually, they let the, the government decided to let him go. That's the the official story. 
But according to the people there, there was no government saying let him go. There was like the guys holding him and said, you know what, it's not worth it. Yeah, that's one of the uh, the uh, technicals, as they call them up here. <sighs> yeah, dump trucks, they armor plate the sides and you know, put somebody out. God, shit. imagine being a person living there. Well, that's, just, that's what I'm trying to picture, like yeah. what life is like for the civilians. And yeah, most of these videos are all done you now by civilians so yeah. there, there's a certain normalcy in some of these cases especially in Sinaloa. law it's part of it it's, it's part of the uh, culture there and <laughs> as far as sides go you know hey the army's coming to save us that's not usually what te- pe- some people in some of these communities think you know because the cartels are those are the guys in charge so is sinaloa always been like that like how long has it sinaloa been? has traditionally been been a, a cradle for like the origins of some of the hot, some of the more successful cartel uh, heads right isn't that where julio cesar chavez is from yeah yeah, yeah he is yeah and um you know lot lots of uh lots of anybody that's anybody in sinaloa has some sort of relationship to the cartels because they're part of culture there there's, wow. there's no way getting around it had a surreal experience once when I went there. I did a class out there, um, and the uh, it was running down this bumpy road, and then all of a sudden, just flat, beautiful road. Oh yeah, this is the cartel part of the road that they built. <laughs> it's like okay, uh, wow. So it's like sort of like the mob in Vegas in the, in like the fifties yeah, and sixties. Exactly, exactly. But it's now and they're way more hardcore. Way more hardcore. You know, yeah. Some some of their grave. Uh, gra- they have a. Uh, Jardines del Maya is called is, is the uh, narco cemetery they have, and it's basically luxury condos. They look like I mean, I went there. I thought it was a church, and it turned out to be a tomb. Wow! Right. So the the opulence and the money there is just overt, you know. And and how they move around, they roll around in vehicles with guns, and nobody does anything because they own the city. What can be? What are they planning on doing? Does anybody have any plans, or is it just they're just accepting this? Well, you know, you 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 get a lot of rhetoric about uh, collaboration. Yeah, that's that's Hardina's Elamaya. All of those are graves. Some of them wow. have CCTV video inside, air conditioning, you know, alarms. Those yeah. are graves. Those are grave sites, and the cartel guys' uh, heads go there. And on the Day of the Dead, have music, live bands, shoot their rakes into the air. Nobody does anything. Wow. <coughs> Jesus Christ, this is crazy. Yeah. I mean, the opulence is amazing. I mean, uh, to just seeing it, you know, it's, a, it's like having several Escobars in one place. You know, it's not, you know, it's, it's like a lot of, car- a lot of uh, cartels uh, heads are from that region and a lot of their kids grew up in that and, you know, the opulence is amazing. Fuck. Like, is this going to grow? I think it is. I, it's, I mean, I don't think it is. It is growing. You know, again, uh, going back to my friend John Norris and having, seeing his experiences up here, uh, finding all these illegal drug grows in, 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 in public lands, it's growing. It's growing over here, too. Yeah. So you Roots. S- yeah. So a um, th- thing that a lot of people have to think about, a lot of these cartel guys had their kids up here. So they, they made their money down there. And they sent their wives up here. And a lot of these kids that were born in the late 80s, early 90s, come of age up here with that cartel pedigree. So, and they're U.S. citizens, U.S. passport. So you're, you're going you're gonna to see some sort of shift. And, you know, they're coming of age. You'll get experience. You get, you know, a handoff of reins from the older generation to the newer generation. And you're going to see it definitely, it's definitely growing. It seems so crazy to watch because it seems like it's not discussed nearly enough. And it, it seems like if it, if it keeps getting stronger, like what we saw with El Chapo's son being released, like what, it, what's to stop it from taking over Mexico entirely? Well, I mean, you, you, you would have people arguing that it already has in, in different ways. So, I think another thing that people kind of have to kind of figure out and realize is that there's factions in Mexican in the Mexican government. So you will see a federal government that apparently is being paid off by a very specific large cartel group. And then you'll see state governments that are a different political uh, party influenced uh, paying off by other cartel uh, groups. So you'll see, you know, military units moving on the town and the state police blocking their way to get in there. Because they play for different teams, right? Whoa! Um, 
You know, there's a, there's a lot of talk right now about uh, Felipe Calderon's tenure and how his head of, secu- uh, head of public safety was on the payroll of the Sinaloa cartel, which actually came out uh, during El Chapo's trial. So now you're talking about basically a federal police force that was on El Chapo's side. So he had free reigns to grow and do whatever he had to do in that region with the support of the federal government in a way. So te- <sighs> technically, you know, who's in control of some regions? And, and realistically, some regions of Mexico are completely in cartel control. 